Some people say that this is the Super Bowl of fishing. And a lot of people wait all year long and count down the days, the months, even the seconds until they can get back down to buoy 10 to have a chance to catch one of these monster fall Chinook that are moving in from the salt water to travel up the Columbia River to spawn. Not only are there massive Chinook salmon, fall Chinook salmon, if you will, there's also coho running up the river at the exact same time. So not only do you have an opportunity to go down and catch some of the year's biggest Chinook salmon that are gonna travel up the river system, you also have the chance to double dip and move yourself into another category and fish for coho, which are an amazing salmon, just as good a table fare, if not equal parts to the fall Chinook. Now, Springer, as everybody knows, carries that massive fat content, right? But the fall and coho salmon are also quite tasty as well. And so in this video, welcome back to another Walking on Water tutorial. Of course, we are gonna go over absolutely everything you need, rod-wise, line-wise, reel-wise, terminal tackle-wise, flasher, and setups, so you can go down there and be successful in the salt at buoy 10, where the salt meets the fresh, baby. Let's get right into it. The first thing we're gonna talk about here today, yes, I got a new rod, and it is not a very expensive rod, but it's also a good rod, and it will 100% get the job done. I'm not gonna sit on here and tell you that you need to all go out and buy Guide Select Pros or Classics. If you can afford to do so, that's amazing. Go do it, they are amazing rods. I love Okuma, but I went with the Okuma SST. This Okuma SST is a power heavy rod, which in my opinion, if you are gonna go down and fish the Super Bowl of Chinook salmon fishing, you should have a heavy action rod in your arsenal. If not, every single one should be heavy. I mean, you don't know if you're gonna hook in. I mean, medium heavy you can get away with for sure. Now don't get me wrong, you can get away with medium heavy, but there is a huge possibility that you are going to catch your biggest Chinook of the year down there in that fishery. So why not be ready for that game, AKA ready for that fight of the fish? Okay, Okuma SST Power Heavy. It's a nine foot rod and it's gonna go down there and get the job absolutely done. Why do you want such a heavy rod? Well, in my mind, yeah, medium heavies work great. Medium heavies work great for 360 flashers as well. And you can run medium heavy rods. I'm not saying you have to run a heavy rod, but I went ahead and just opted in to go with the heavy rod this time. Um, it's a long rod, it's nine foot rod. It'll get nice, consistent pulses with my short bus 360 series flasher. And you're gonna be running anywhere from as low as six all the way up to 16 ounces of lead, if not a little more in some situations. So in my mind, I want to use the rod that's going to be able to do the most for me when I'm down there in that fishery. And I feel like a heavy action rod, a nice long rod, get that nice 360 Super Series pulse going, as well as be able to handle the weight that I'm putting on it with the weight and size of the fish that we are going to be catching down there at buoy 10. And so I opted in for the heavy. Now the real, you can go the low pro, you can go any brand, Daiwa. I personally love my Okuma cold waters. Um, it's not a low pro reel, but it's got the line counter on there. I can replicate depths over and over and over and over again. And I'm, this is basic stuff, guys. Everybody's using line counters nowadays. Um, if you don't know about line counters, you simply let line out. It counts the line that it's letting out so you know exactly how deep you are in the water. And if you get a fish on at that depth, you can easily replicate that over and over and over again. Um, for the line itself, I always run braid. Um, I've been a braid guy for a long time now, and I'm sure there's a lot of arguments on that as well. But in this video, I'm gonna talk about my braid. I'm just using a 50 pound spider wire braid. Um, 50 pound is a, still a very thin diameter braid, and it's gonna get the job done down there at buoy 10. Um, let's move down into the terminal tackle. As we move towards the business end of this situation, of course, if you've ever seen any of my videos before, I like the VIP line locks. These are a must have when it comes to 360 fishing. And that's simply because the VIP line lock locks into this bead chain just like that. And the bead chain spins while your weight's holding onto it and you're traveling forward. So it's sucking that weight back into that bead chain and the bead chain spins and nothing else spins. Then I like to grab 
my 24 inch bumper. 24 inch bumper has always been my go-to. I don't usually switch it up very often because like I said, I usually am fishing solo. And so I'm running two rods, so I just like to keep things as consistent as possible. Then we are gonna move down into our short bus super series flasher. This isn't one I would particularly use first down there, but it is sitting right here at my disposal and I have a whole array of short bus flashers just like JT from Short Bus sells a whole array of these flashers that you can go out and pick up and go absolutely slay with. That is the terminal tackle, guys. Let's move into a couple setups that will help you guys get started in your adventures down there on Buoy 10 and will, in my mind, 100% help you catch fish. We'll talk about a little bit of scent too. All right, guys, and the first thing that we are gonna go over, everything is gonna be tied up in today's um, video with a double non-slip mooching rig just like this one right here. Now, you don't have to use double single hooks like this. You could use a treble hook um, as your trailer hook. That's perfectly fine. A lot of people do it. Um, I like using just the double hooks um, simply because once it's pinned in the corner of that fish's mouth, there's really not that much leverage that's really going to get it out. Um, it does happen, obviously, but in my mind, once that thing's in the corner of the mouth and it's fighting you, it's not coming out. With the trebles, yeah, more hooks can possibly get buried into the fish itself, but there is leverage that can be gained to help pop that treble out of its mouth. So that's my little argument on it all. The leader length, anywhere from a 30 to a 36 inch leader is usually what I like to run behind an 11 inch super series short bus flasher. That's just my go-to. Um, obviously, if you have your own dialed in, uh, more power to you, but if you're going to want to start somewhere, 30 to 36 inches is a great way to start. And so a lot of the setups that we're going to be talking about down there are going to be utilizing 3.5 blades as well as Brad's super baits. And we're going to talk about a couple of these here right now. And so for the first setup, we have just the standard hoochie right here like this. Okay. This is a gorgeous hoochie. Pink will do work down there um, at buoy 10. Also, the Walking on Water Hybrid Hoochie. This is a four inch hoochie. It's a little bit longer, but if you know anything about my hoochies, you simply just cut the bottom like so. And now you have a four inch hoochie just like that. Gorgeous, will work 100%. Can be set up the exact same way as um, the acrylic or whatever this plastic crap's called um but also this is a trolling fly head this is a real hoochie you can as well if you want to get really fancy shove that head of that hoochie down over that trolling fly and now you have a combination of a hoochie and a walking on water hybrid hoochie all in one just like that which will also be very effective if you are fishing hoochies. And we're gonna set up this hoochie to fish right now. As you can tell, it still has the top on, so I like to cut right there at that top so my line can feed through. Then I'm gonna grab a couple beads here. I'm gonna pop two six millimeter beads down the line. I don't really care about the color um, of these beads. I just want it down the line. And with a hoochie this size, sitting up right there like that, that'll be absolutely perfect. And so we're just gonna move the skirt of this hoochie back until we find the hole, just like so. And then we're gonna pull the line up through the top of the head. We're gonna work that down nice and snug. And what I'm looking for when I'm looking to run these hoochies, I don't really wanna see the top hook, but as you can see as I'm squeezing the skirt of this hoochie, you can see the hook hanging out the back right here, right? That way, if they come up and short strike that, that trail hook, that stinger hook, is gonna be right in that fish's face, okay? So we have our hoochie on there. Absolutely gorgeous, looking good. Then, what are we going to do next? We are gonna grab one more bead, just like so. Okay, we're gonna slide that down there. We are gonna grab an Oregon Tackle or other brand inline spinner clevis, just like so. Then, we have 3.5 flasher blades like this custom flasher blades by Hook Me Up Lures, my channel's sponsor for blades. And if you guys wanna check them out, hookmeuplures.com. And this is a custom type one diabetes um, blade for my son Kai that they did. Absolutely gorgeous, absolutely amazing. And I'm very grateful for it. 
And so we're just gonna pop that 3.5 blade right on there, just like so. This is going to be a great place to start when you are looking to go down and catch Fall Chinook and Coho down there at Bowie 10, guys. This will be an absolute killer. I'm not even joking with you guys. I used to fish off the jetties down in Winchester Bay, and we used to fish identical setups. The blade was bigger, um, for sure. It might have been like a 4.0, um, but they were in, in body spinners, so they were hard body spinners with the metal and everything, um, with a hoochie, pink hoochie, just like this, the double hooks on the back, and you would just cast it out there, and those coho and chinook in the bay would absolutely smoke them. Some of the funnest fishing, honestly, you have the tides moving in, hitting the rocks, a big school of fish moves in, and everybody just starts catching, and then it, they, the tide shifts, and they move out and in. It's, it's just a really fun way to fish, guys, and that's the same with buoy 10, and so this is going to be an amazing setup to go down there and absolutely destroy Chinook and Coho down at Bowie 10. So this is just one setup. This is a double hoochie setup, obviously. You do not need to put the walking on water hybrid hoochie inside of the setup itself. You could take it out and you could run it just like this. Act like you don't see this hoochie right here. And then your blade goes down above that hoochie. Or you could just run this hoochie right here, up here. I'm not saying run two hoochies at once, guys. I'm saying you could take this top one off and just have the walking on water hybrid hoochie, or you could take the walking on water hybrid hoochie off and you could just have the standard hoochie. But like I said, if you wanna get fancy with it, shove the walking on water hoochie up into the skirt, just like that. And you have an absolute killer setup for Chinook and Coho down at Bowie 10, baby, the Super Bowl. So let's get into one more setup. This is kind of a universal setup. You could fish Brad's original Super Baits. You can fish Brad's Cut Plugs, or you can fish Spin Fish with this exact setup, and we're gonna go over it right now. All right, so I'm gonna slide three green chartreuse beads, six millimeter beads down the line. Original Brad Super Bait, okay? The Cut Plug. Brad's mini cut plug and the kokanee cut plug. All three of these are honestly extremely viable options. Actually, I misspoke. All four of those are extremely viable options. You could also use a spin fish, exactly how we're setting these up. You could go out, you could fish spin fish by Yakima Baits as well. Um, another viable option. So in this video, for video purposes, we're just gonna use the cut plug. It's big enough, everybody can see it. Super simple, super easy. I already have a video on all this, but this is one of the go-to setups down there. And so all you do is just slide, after you put your three six millimeter beads on the line, just slide right up through that bottom eyelet like that. And then up through the big one, and then up through the hole, coming out the top, just like that. Okay, you can slide it down. And now you have a cut plug rigged up with the hooks trailing right behind it. Now, if you guys want to learn how to do different setbacks um, with these brads, with any kind of super bait in general at all, go over to my channel, check out um, three different ways to set up brads super baits. It's actually a good video. Um, there's a lot of different methods on how to set up different setbacks so you can have your hooks set back from your super bait as is. Now, again, you're going to be stuffing these with tuna. They come with a foam mat inside. Simply take out the mat and fill it with tuna. Okay, now guys, the last thing that I want to talk about are scents and a very popular scent down there is the Salmon Slammer by Procure. And why is it popular? Because it is holding a little bit of garlic in there. Um, garlic, um, when those fish, something about the tidal water, the salt meeting the fresh um, that gets these fish all riled up. And if you want a very good starting point, garlic will be an amazing starting point for you guys. So. These are very basic things that we talked about here today, but this is an amazing starting point for somebody that wants to go down and learn and be a part of the buoy 10 fishery. This will get you on the water, and I can guarantee you if you apply these methods correctly out there on buoy 10, you will find success in catching yourself some very tasty fall chinook and coho. Thank you guys so much for tuning into this episode of Walking on Water. I will see you all out on the water. Check you in the next one.